Hello again, back from holidays. My objective in this video is to show you how to tension the timing chain at the front of the engine here. Now, the first question to be asked is, how do we know that the timing chain needs tensioning? Well, the giveaway answer to that question is, if it's rattling, and I'll show you now in a few minutes, um, how you can listen and how you can hear the chain rattling at the front. This particular engine of 5LW has got a chain that is really quite loose, so there's no problem uh, hearing it. Another way is, if we can't hear it and we're suspicious or we just want to check, we can move the auxiliary shaft here and feel the slap in it. Now, I've hurt my, my right hand, so I just don't have the strength to move that at the minute. I'm going to have to use a Stilson. So I can get a Stilson spanner, put it on there like that. <coughs> it's not happy to go that way. We'll try it this way. And you can see a very definite, there's a very definite movement there. That should be nothing like that. <coughs> now, in the user manual for these engines, uh, you'll see that they suggest half an inch of slap in the chain um, for normal tension, half an inch of deflection midway down this, uh, this <clears throat> length of chain down here. Um, and here in the yard, we've got the, we're in a very blessed situation. We can pop off the timing case cover and we can actually see the slap in the chain. In the manual it suggests removing this this um, screw here and putting in a piece of bent wire and feeling it that way but um, I've never been that comfortable with that. I prefer certainly here in the yard to take off the timing chain the timing case cover and actually see the movement in the chain. Now um, but if you're on board a boat and there's a bulkhead here or if you're an engine with a radiator here and you can't take off the time case cover, you have no option but to test the, the deflection here. So I'll fire up now and I'll let you hear uh, the slap in the chain. I think you can hear that rattle quite clearly there. It's quite unambiguous. Now, on some engines, there's actually an inspection plate here at the front, and you can remove that, and that enables you to get in there and see the deflection on the chain. Now, before we take off the, the, um, the timing case cover, we can discuss uh, this adjustment here. This is the adjustment lever. Um, so you can see how much adjustment there is there. Now, what we do is we, uh, we slacken that nut there. This bigger nut here, if I can home in there, is the actual lock nut. So we get a spanner on there, we slacken that, and then this lever here will move to take up the, the slack in the chain. It's all very simple. Then we tighten the lock nut again, tighten this nut, and the job's done. Now, if we look really closely at this, first of all, you listen very carefully, you'll hear a bumblebee in the background. And there's nothing I can do about that. Um, but you'll see an outline there. You see that, that silver shape? That was actually a clip which held that link in place. Now what has happened is the link has popped, the clip has popped off. And it's an absolute miracle that that link has stayed in place. I just can't, I can hardly believe it that it stayed in place. So let me go now and take, show you how those original old, li old links worked. You'll remember that the Gardner is a triplex chain. So we've got a third of the chain there, a third of the chain there, and a third of the chain there. Then we've got that clip. You see the clip on the outside? But that clip type have very much fallen out of fashion. Really, they are very much frowned upon now. The modern type has no clip. The, the uh, pins are simply riveted in place. Now, I've had quite a struggle 
trying to get the old link out. And I suspect what has happened here is that somebody at some stage way back in the distant past have actually riveted the old link using the new riveting tool, which I'll show you uh, shortly. And that's why the link stayed in place without the clip. But in my struggles here, I've noticed that there's a lot of transfer slap in the chain. I think this I think this chain is really quite worn and I think we will fit a new one. Now it's quite a tricky job. We can't fish it through here. We have to drop the sump in order to get the new chain in. Uh, but that's an opportunity to wash the sump out and make sure it's 100% as well. Now while I'm here, I'll just give you a tour of this engine. As I said, it's a 5LW. Um, there's nothing particularly startling about it really. Um, she will have seen that she starts very readily and she's running fine. Uh, this is a rather unusual um, air intake arrangement here. Um, it's a little bit broken in places, but this engine is actually going to a bus in America and they've already got a 5LW, so they'll be able to switch uh, various parts across to suit their needs. They'll probably have to switch across the flywheel and perhaps the mounts. I, I really don't know. But the oil pressure is good. Um, she starts very readily. There's no smoke and uh, she's really quite smooth. Quite a nice engine. You'll see here that's the new link and we've positioned it in such a way uh, that the special tool will behind it. And it fits onto that link that I just showed you. We finger tighten the screw and then we put on the spanner and we tighten it up. It's all very simple. So what you'll notice is <clears throat> the outer blade on these new links is <clears throat> what's known as an interference fit on the pins. So we've got to get that outer blade over the pins before we rivet the pins themselves. Now this tool is actually very clever. It's got <clears throat> more than one surface on it. This surface here, if we engage it here like that, will push the blade on for you. Then you take that off, put in this side and tighten it up and that does the actual riveting. It's very clever. Um, Another method that I've used in the past is if we use two wings and just get the, <coughs> the proper wing positioned first of all with another wing in front of it here to push it in, that also works and then you can rivet the pins up. It works very well. So the proof of the pudding's in the eating. Uh, we'll fire up now and see has the rattle gone uh, inside the timing case. I'm just about to hit the button. But I can't let her run for very long because the fumes are blowing in around me in, around me in this particular shed here. But you'll get the idea. You should uh, gather that the, the rattle that was there before is now gone. So I'm not too sure how convinced you were there or how convincing that audio was, but because the engine is now in its shipping frame and because we've got all sorts of things connected to it, the whole acoustic, whole acoustical environment is different. But I, I do assure you the rattle is definitely gone. Thanks a lot. And so we come to the end of another exciting video from me. Uh, I don't know if you got anything out of that or not. No, I certainly learned. Uh, I found the, the issue of the old link really bizarre. Um, so thank you very much for, for viewing and uh, we'll, we'll roll on to the next one.